The following will cover the remaining menu settings and some best operational practices that the operator can use to adjust to his preference. To change performance settings, use the main menu key to navigate to the production measurement screen. You can recall or clear the previous performance information by selecting Work Monitor. The Work Monitor tracks several performance metrics, but I'd first like you to note that each of these performance metrics has two sums. The top one resembles the total stored to trucks, while the bottom one resembles total payload, including that done during standby. This is referenced by the truck over all definition at the top. The parameters being tracked are average fuel rate, average productivity, average efficiency, total payload, total truck count, total bucket count, and idle time rate. In order to reset the work monitor, press the reset button. The operating mode allows the operator to toggle CPM enable status, which will remove CPM from appearing on the display when cycling th through with the pattern change key. Enable or disable the auto ID that brings up the truck selection after the store key is pressed and set the reminder interval to run a bucket zero calibration. Sound setup allows you to change audible alerts for truck loading status and bucket weight status. These are active when using a target payload weight, which is not required. Having the sounds on is also very helpful during the calibration process. Truck list allows you to edit the name and target payload of the stored trucks. See the operations and maintenance manual for details on editing the list. Press the home screen to return to the production measurement screen. If at any time a bucket is dumped but is not intended to be part of the accumulated load, the operator can use the bucket cancel function key to remove that material from the accumulated truck weight. To get to the bucket cancel function key, use the pattern change key if it's not currently on the display. Press the bucket cancel key and the last bucket will be subtracted from the cumulative truck weight. If you accidentally press the bucket cancel key but decide to keep the payload, press the bucket recall key to restore that load and continue loading. If you choose to reload the same truck for any reason, do not press the store button. Dump the truck and press the truck cancel key to remove the information and then reload the truck. This could also be used to zero the display, hauling unit, and bucket weight prior to loading a truck. If you begin loading and find you have accidentally chosen the wrong truck, you can select another truck in the middle of the load. Use the site configuration key and select the correct truck. The current bucket weights are transferred to the new truck load. If you need to reweigh a truck, you may get warning messages on the display such as unsmooth lift, boom too high, or stick too close. To help reduce warning messages, use these tips. Keep the machine on less than a 10% slope. Make sure you dump all the weighed material in the truck instead of carrying part of it back to the digging area. Keep the boom and stick within acceptable swing and lift parameters by avoiding the red zones. Swing long and fast enough to allow for gathering accurate payload information indicated by the weigh status. If you do get an unsmooth error message, you won't have to dump the bucket. Simply re-swing smoothly to automatically get an accurate weigh. If you consistently get the boom too high or stick too close or other messages, you might consider repositioning the excavator or hauling unit. Typically, in those applications, a longer swing or bench loading can help prevent these messages from occurring. For full instructions, read the Operations and Maintenance Manual. Contact your local Caterpillar dealer for additional materials that are available.